Hi everybody, welcome. Today I want to talk a little bit about how to go to a lumber yard and select your lumber. How to know what you're paying for, what kind of lumber you're getting, and really where to start looking and what to pick. Uh, going to a lumber yard is completely different than going to the big box store and buying lumber. Um, two of the main differences are uh, your, your big box stores are going to dimension the lumber for you. So you're going to have uh, three quarter inch lumber for the most part, plain down and then ripped to uh, specific widths so that they can give a price in linear feet. So, you know, you go to the, the big box store and you want uh, whatever, an oak board that's 10 feet long. Um, you basically look at the thing, it's six inches wide and it's $2.85 a uh, foot, a linear foot. So you're going to pay... Uh, 10 times that and you're going to get your board. You know, it's easy and the people know how to price that and it's easy to get out the door. Uh, there's waste involved in doing that and sawmills, lumber yards don't like to waste anything. They use all of the board. Um, so you can have random lengths and widths at a lumber yard. That's the first thing you need to know about. And the other thing you need to know about is quite frankly, they're not planing the lumber down for you. It's a service. They will plane it down for you if they ask them at a fee. And it's not that expensive, actually. As a beginning woodworker, if you don't have a big joiner and planer yet, it's not that expensive to go buy some lumber and have them plan it for you. They'll do it. They're making money. They don't care. They bought the equipment. they gotta, they got to use it to pay for it. Um, and generally, it's kind of cool to watch because they generally have, like, big, huge, uh, old uh, planers and joiners that are, you know, the old cast iron monsters, and it's fun to watch them things run. Uh, and anyway, there's a few other things you need to know other than it's different because... Looking at a, a fuzzy, long board, you're, it doesn't tell you much. You don't know how to buy it still. Um, and I do have some notes here, so I apologize. I'll be looking down a few times. I, uh, uh, I, I don't have all this stuff memorized in my head, to be honest with you. When I go to the lumber yard, I know enough to know the different grades. You know, I know what figure is, and I know how to calculate a board foot in my head, which are the things we're going to talk about. And I know what a board is in, in, in quarters, which is the thickness. Those are the four things that I need to talk about. I just rattled through all four of them real quick. I'll start with grading. Uh, and I'm going to link uh, to the AmericanHardwood.org website, which lists all of the grades and in paragraph form explains to you what they are uh, perfectly. I'm going to touch on some of them here, the ones that are most commonly seen at, you know, at lumber yards that we would go to, you know, woodworkers. Uh, the number one grade I want to talk about is FAS, and what FAS stands for is first and seconds. Uh, this is the highest grade hardwood could get, and to be FAS, the board has to be eight feet long, it has to be six inches wide, and it has to have 83 and a third clear face on both sides for FAS, which means that has to be a nice clean board. Um, and to make it even more difficult, because, you know, if you're at 83 and a third, you still have, what, 16 and three uh, and two thirds of scrap you can have. So that means there could be some knots randomly around that you could just cut around and say, hey, I still have 83% here. Doesn't work like that. Where the, where the defects are, you have to be able to get boards that measure either four inches by five feet long or three inches by seven feet long for that board to grade out um, at FAS and it has to be both sides so um, it sounds like it's pretty tricky but believe it or not FAS is common there's a lot of FAS boards in lumber yards um, the, the net and, and, and and you know like I said it's the most expensive lumber and you don't always need it we'll talk about that in a minute uh, the next grade I want to talk about um, is the common grades there are a couple grades select and uh, FAS 1C, uh, or 1F, excuse me. Uh, I don't see those, those, those types a lot. You can read about them down in the uh, link I give you. Uh, they're not, they don't even have a mention of those at the lumber yard I go to. I go to a place called Hearn Hardwood up in Pennsylvania. Uh, it's an excellent lumber yard. They have a sawmill. They, they, they're a sawmill. They have a big, big mill on site. Uh, and you can uh, go there and watch them run the mill at certain times. Uh, they have a Lee Nielsen event once a year there, which is awesome to go to. Um, and they're a very good lumber yard. They have a very large selection, and they have friendly people there to work there. They help you out. So if you're into Pennsylvania, Maryland, uh, maybe New Jersey, I guess I don't know that area that well up there. But you know, if you're, you know, I'm an hour and twenty minute drive from there, and I go there, so that should explain something to you. 
Uh, we don't have a good lumberyard here in the Washington, D.C. area, or at least I don't know of one, so I don't want to say we don't have a good one and then have somebody say, yes, we do, and it's here. Um, for those of you who don't know Washington, D.C. very well, you know, Washington, D.C. was basically plucked out of Maryland and Virginia, and it's kind of squoze in between us, and it has this thing called the beltway around it, and that is a huge parking lot at almost all times of the day. So if there is a good lumber yard somewhere down in Virginia, it's just, it's almost as long to drive there than it is for me to drive up to Pennsylvania. So there could be a lumber yard in the Washington, D.C. area, and it's hard for me to get to. Uh, enough on that. Um, it's just, I like to go to Hearn Hardwood because the prices are good. It has a great selection. It's fun to go up there. You know, I go up there Saturday morning when I go, get in the truck, drive early in the morning, get there 8 o'clock in the morning, spend a couple hours, I'm still home by lunchtime. So there you have it. So going on to the common grades, the big difference is all common grades of lumber uh, only have to be four feet long and three inches wide. So realistically here, you're talking about a lot smaller pieces of lumber. Um, and uh, they only have to have, the number one common can have 66 and two thirds uh, clean instead of that 83% number. And the number two and number three comments only have to be 50% and 33%, 33 and two thirds percent, or excuse me, 33 and one third, that one third might matter. Um, so they really are smaller boards usually that uh, have a little bit more knots in them. They do have to have a three inch by two foot clean board in them somewhere. And, and honestly, the number two uh, common B actually it doesn't have to be a clean board. It just has to be a sturdy board, meaning if it has a solid knot in there, that's okay. The reason for that is the number 2B common is considered paint grade lumber. So uh, they grade it that way and they let you have stains and solid knots in the, uh, you know, solid defects because you're painting it. The number 2A common can't. It has to be clean lumber. Uh, and, and, you know, the number 1 common um, you know, it has to have a four inch by two foot board instead of a three inch by two foot board or a three inch by three foot board. And it's 66 and two thirds. So it's just got to be a little bit bigger than the other common. Um, number one common is generally the lumber used for furniture making. Uh, a lot of furniture doesn't really require long, long, long pieces of lumber. Uh, so if you can use the shorter boards that have just some defects in them and get your parts cut around them. That's why we have cut lists and we have like, you know, I need a board two inches by four inches or, you know, two inches wide by three feet long. So you can, you know, go at your cut list and say, all right, this piece here is out because there's a knot there. But you can build your pieces and actually, uh, you know, get the lumber out of the cheap, you know, get the lumber out of the cheaper pieces. Um, if you're building a dining room table and you need that longer lumber and maybe you want it to look really good, get some figure in there or something, then you're going to the higher end lumber. And there I kind of gave myself a good segue to the next thing I want to talk about, and that is figure in lumber. Figure in lumber can drastically change the price of lumber. Um, now obviously, I haven't talked price yet, but obviously FAS lumber is going to cost more than common lumber. It's, over, it's almost twice the price uh, than common. Um, figured lumber could be three, four, five times the price of F FAS, even no matter how it grades. I mean, figure costs money. It just is what it is. If you're buying uh, instrument grade uh, fiddleback, uh, you know, cherry or maple. Um, you pay a fortune for it, guys. It's just very expensive because, you know, they got that tree and when they cut it open, there was this beautiful piece of wood and they knew they made a fortune on that tree. The next tree they cut down right next to it may open up and be just common grade beautiful cherry, but it doesn't have any figure in it and it's five bucks a board foot instead of 22 bucks a board foot for some of this really crazy figure made those numbers up by the way so don't don't hold me to those numbers um so those are the common grades uh and that's the figure those two things basically can make separate types of boards the third thing is the thickness of the board uh lumber is graded or measured thickness wise in quarters of an inch so what we're looking at is uh an inch thick board is four quarters um so I've probably heard, you've probably heard the term four quarters before when people are talking about hardwood lumber. And that's what they mean. That means that board is an inch wide. It's four quarters of an inch, which is one inch. If it was five quarters, that would mean that board was one and a quarter inches thick. Eight quarters, two inches. Sixteen quarters, four inches. 
Uh, pretty simple. That's just how that works. I mean, once you get that in your head, once you got it. Um, the reason you need to know that is lumber can be priced differently as if it's thicker. Even if the boards come out to be the same volume or the same board foot, which is what we'll talk about next. So, uh, you know, the different, the different thicknesses can cost a little bit more, meaning a four-quarter FAS cherry board can cost five fifty a board foot, but a uh, FAS eight-quarter cherry board could cost six and a quarter a board foot. You know, you're paying for that thickness. Even though, it's, uh, even though the volume of the board might be the same, you're going to pay, this, you know, you're going to pay more for that thickness. Um, or the vol if the volume's the same, you're going to say pay the same price but the thick board is going to cost you a little bit more per board foot. I think I said that right. Thicker boards cost more. Um, just go with that. Uh, so the grade of the board, the thickness of the board, and the figure of the board are the three things that make up the different stacks of lumber in a lumber yard. Um, and that's how they decipher and figure out what the boards are. And then they put a price on it, which is... A price that is dictated by what they call a board foot. Um, so Hearn Hardwood has 29 separate prices for cherry. Now they're right in the middle of Pennsylvania which literally is the cherry capital of the world so they're gonna have all kinds of cherry. The uh, you know if you think about it we talked about a couple of different grades so they have three or four grades of cherry uh, and then they have that they sell cherry in all of the thicknesses, four quarter, five quarter, six quarter, eight quarter, uh, probably 10 quarter, uh, 12 quarter, and 16 quarter. So if they do that by three grades, I don't know how many I just said there, but you can see how they can get to 29 pretty quick. Because then if they do that in uh, Fiddleback, Curly, uh, you know, all the different uh, figures that they have, you can get to 29 different types of cherry really quick. So all of those will be stacked in separate files with a price tag, or not a price tag above them, they will say cherry four quarter FAS. And then you'll have a price list that they may print and give you. It may be on a big board up on the wall. They don't normally put the prices above every bin because if they change their prices, they'd have to go change them all over the place. Uh, so normally it's hung on a big sign somewhere or, uh, you know, I've seen places that actually hand you a printout and you just walk around and you figure it out. So you look at the sign. I am buying uh, cherry it's number two common, um, and it's four quarter. And you look at your sheet and you go, oh, that's $2.50 a board foot, which is exactly what it is at Hearn. Um, so that's what we're going to use uh, tomorrow when we do our little shopping spree that I'll tell you about in a minute. But let's figure out how we figure out a board foot. So uh, let's say that there is a board that we want to purchase, and it's 10 feet long, and it's 12 inches wide, and it is one inch thick, or four quarters. Now this one's pretty easy, which is why I'm doing it, because I can do this math in my head. Um, but a board foot, the calculation is the width of the board in inches, the length of the board in feet, and the thickness of the board in inches. So if this board is 10 feet long, that's 10 by 12 is 120 times, well, 1 here, which doesn't matter because you don't multiply by 1. So we're still at 120. And then we divide that by 12 and that gets you your board foot number so that board is 10 board feet long it's an easy one to figure out because the board is 12 inches wide so the minute you go up one foot you've basically got a square foot which is basically what a board foot is um, so because the board's 10 feet long we got 10 board feet uh, I got another calculation here that we can uh, try what if the board was 10 feet long 8 inches thick so it's not a full foot thick and it's 8 quarters so it's 2 inches wide um, so we have to do that math. Um, 10 by 8 is 80 times 2 is 160 divided by 12 is 13 and a third board feet. So 13 and a third times $2.50 is what that board would cost. And I didn't do that math, so, you know, it's, uh, it's about $32 or something, something around there. Uh, so that's how you figure out what your board's going to cost. Uh, and everything is based off of a board foot calculation. You will have the price of the board foot for the three things we talked about. Uh, the thickness of the board, the grade of the board, and the species of the board. Um, figure is just, it'll be listed on top of the bin. Um, they can just make up what they want on figure because the grading kind of goes out the window then. <laughs> you know, 
if they get a beautiful tiger maple board, they'll price it high. You know, if it's not as great tiger maple, it's not considered, a, you know, you know, uh, instrument grade, it may cost less. Um, there is grading that goes into instrument grades and all of that as well. You know, for us doing, you know, basic introductory woodworking uh, and furniture products projects here, we need to know about FAS and a couple of the commons because that's the lumber we're going to go purchase. So that is how you, you go to a lumber yard. That's the information you need to know. Tomorrow, I am going to film me down in the basement at... Uh, Dungeon Lumber Incorporated, which is my makeshift lumber yard there. I'm going to set up all the cherry I have, and I'm going to go through with a cut list, picking lumber to build the table that's going to go right here. I've been talking about building a table for here. We are going to actually pull boards out, look at them, decide if we want to use them, figure out if you know it's a board we want to keep, and then we'll measure it. We'll figure out what it, it's... it's uh, board foot is and we will uh, do the math at we'll use the 250 uh, a board foot price I will stack the lumber up and I'll tell you exactly how much this lumber would have cost me if I went to the lumber yard to buy it uh, that will be tomorrow so this is the end of today's video thanks for watching guys if you like this hit the like button uh, if you haven't subscribed please go ahead and subscribe and have a nice day we'll see you tomorrow shopping in the basement